rigatoni alla grisia. That like glossy color, doesn't it kind of make it look like you're in like a nice trattoria when it gets that gloss to it? Yes. So today we're making pasta alla grisia. It is a classic Roman pasta, not as famous as carbonara, not as famous as cacio e pepe, not even as famous as amatriciana, which is probably my favorite of them. This is alla grisia, and it is essentially guanciale, which is cured pork jowl, cooked up with a lot of black pepper and pecorino and pasta. It's almost like the best of all the worlds combined together. It is pure flavor, puro sabor, which is not Italian, that's Spanish. When you buy guanciale, it usually comes in a big piece like this, often more than you need for one dish. And so what I like to do is chop it all up and then take the amount I'm not using and just put it in the freezer. Then you've got chopped up guanciale to just throw into something later on. Now I've got a little dime bag of uh, guanciale for a rainy day. All right, so now we're just gonna take some olive oil right here into our pan. Just a couple, like a tablespoon or so, just to get it started. Got it on a nice medium to medium low heat. And we're just gonna take this guanciale and put them right in and just let it start rendering for, you know, until it starts to get kind of crispy. So, you know, five, six, seven minutes. So one of the things that I love about this pasta, and this is a, a little trick that I got from my friend, the great Katie Parla, one of the leading experts in Roman cuisine and really Italian cuisine in general. She talked to me about adding a little bit of white wine to uh, your grisia. So we're gonna basically crisp up this guanciale, then add the white wine and let that kind of braise off for a second. And that's gonna bring a little bit of lightness and acidity to an otherwise very heavy dish with no acid. And it's not like you're adding lemon juice, it just kind of gives it a little bit of a rounded note to it. If I could only have one meat to cook with pasta, I don't know what this scenario is where it's like, all right, you only get one meat to cook with pasta the rest of your life. Uh, it would be guanciale because a little bit goes a long way to cook with pasta. What are you laughing at? The scenario? Yeah. But it would be guanciale because a little bit goes a long way. The fat is the flavor in it and you're getting so much cool stuff through it. Ooh, yeah, now we're getting close. All right, gun to your head. You only get one meat to cook with pasta for the rest of your life. What's it gonna be? Salami, no wait, shit, I ruined it. All right, this is looking pretty good now. Add in a hefty splash of white wine. And we're just gonna let that kind of simmer away. And now that this is at this stage, that also means we can add our pasta. Ooh, we gotta salt the pasta water too, buddy. The pasta water is extra important in dishes like this and cacio e pepe because you're really trying to um, emulsify the cheese with the sauce, with this fat, trying to make this real unified, like the pasta water is making the sauce with everything else. As soon as this evaporates out, we add in the pasta, add in a terrifying amount of black pepper. I'm actually gonna get a head start on this and start adding the black pepper now because it takes a minute to grind it and I wanna get that black pepper to kind of toast a little bit with all that fat. You want it to be peppery and fatty and bright. So we're getting real close over here. Um, you could also always add a little ladle of the pasta water in now. Just kind of start getting that sauce building up. We want this to be saucy. Cause remember we're gonna be adding our pecorino in here. And so we're gonna want this to get kind of the fat and the water to kind of emulsify. Let's go a little heavier on the old black pea. I greatly prefer this to a carbonara because I find that I don't really ever want a super eggy pasta. So you see we got some of that kind of glossy, saucy happening there. Well, now we can take it off heat and we're gonna stir in the majority of our pecorino, basically just like a nice big hefty handful and then we're gonna save some to uh, sprinkle on at the end. And then the old off heat stir machine. If it gets too thick, you can always add a little more of that pasta water back in. Just want this to all kind of melt and combine and be this kind of creamy emulsified thing. The pasta water really helps because remember, aged cheeses do not melt that well. They tend to break and especially a pecorino. Doesn't that just look great? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ben. 
This is our, what, six ingredient pasta? Really simple, pecorino, guanciale, really good pasta, olive oil, black pepper. Oh yeah, this is a great pasta. Funky, fatty, satisfying. That pepper really hits it. It's just a great pasta. This is just a classic Roman pasta, and it is a classic for a reason. That's it, that's our show. And remember, the Don't Panic Pantry cookbook comes out January 31st. That's right, go down below, pre-order the book. Links are down there. We even have exclusive promo codes for people who pre-order this book to get exclusive discounts on brands like Headley and Bennett, Semolina Artisan Pasta, Enzo's Olive Oil, and more. Very exciting. Check it out, slurp it up, buy it now, do it right. My dog's name is Tianfu. That's you.